He was a he was a seventh round guy who I covered in college. He doesn't remember at Oregon State with Ocho Cinco. You don't even remember that. I was a big TV star. <laughs> you're a big TV star, <laughs> and now. you're in college eating Top Ramen. Top Ramen Pizza Pipeline in Corvallis. <laughs> the pizza Pipeline. There you go, buddy. Um, all right. So here's what's funny. So LeBron left Ohio. That's a kick in the groin. Urban Meyer retires in Ohio, kick in the groin. So I get that Ohio just wants some good news. Yesterday, Baker throws three picks, has two bad ones late, completes 55% of his throws, loses, and Cleveland's like, it's the greatest game in the hit. And I'm like, you lost. I think Lamar Jackson is the story of all the rookie quarterbacks. I watched him live and I've watched him in person. He doesn't have an interception in December. He's six and one. He's in total control. He's bizarrely athletic. I'm watching the Browns Raven yesterday, and the announcers are going crazy for Baker. And I'm like, is anybody watching what's going? Who wants to play Baltimore in the playoffs? What do you make of Lamar? Did you think he was going to be this good? With I didn't know the Ravens defense was this great. Now it kind of reminds me of Russell Wilson when he got drafted to Seattle. His Russell Wilson's first three years in the league, Seattle had the number one defense. Yes. Very similar with Lamar Jackson. The Ravens are really good defensively. And he, Baker Mayfield played great yesterday, but he's the reason they lost. In these big games, you cannot throw three interceptions. And two of them were short guy picks. You, you, Little guy picks. They look too small. hope they're not intercepted. Like the last play when they blitzed him, it was – he was just begging to be intercepted. Yeah. And, and it was one – Lamar Jackson is playing great. He – but – he has so much help around him. Okay. If he does not make a mistake, they're going to be in every game. Now, that, that's, I think that's fair. You're adding context to it, and that's what I've said. Sam Darnold's got nothing to work with. Josh Allen has nothing to work with. Josh Rosen has nothing to work with. Baker's got some pretty good players. Baltimore's got a defense that Lamar can basically go into a game knowing, just eat it, don't throw the ball. Don't turn the ball over. Pun We're it. in every game. Yeah, I, I, every but game. I, th- I will say this. I'll say this about Lamar Jackson. I didn't think he was capable of starting in the first year. His poise. He's very calm. Totally. I yeah. noticed it when I went to the game. Yeah. He's in total control of the game. And it, it also, Lamar is coachable as hell. You know how I know this? The idea that I could come in in week 11, and it's a totally different offense, and the coaches every week trust him more and more, that tells you that kid goes in there without an ego, comes in there and is like, teach me. Like, you, you're watching one of the best coaching jobs, but a lot of players, you know this, TJ, they're not willing to accept coaching. Yes. Lamar Jackson, to, to do this this early is really coachable. It, the Ravens are going to be a problem. The only, I don't like the fact that they're playing the Chargers. They're playing them. I know, again. Uh, that, again, so soon. That, and the Chargers didn't have Melvin Gordon. Keenan Allen got hurt early. Lamar Jackson makes a great throw to Mark Andrews, so it's like uh, I know that that's the only thing. The I Chargers agree with you. are really good, and they're playing them so close again. Yep. All right, let's move to this coaching carousel. There's a bunch of job openings. Is Green Bay a little overrated? Like who would? There's eight openings. You like what? <laughs> the best team right now with the opening is probably Cleveland. Best roster. The best roster. You have a rookie quarterback. They have good receivers. Their offensive line is good. Nick, Defensively, they're good. Nick Chubb can they run it. They have a great running. I mean, he, Nick Chubb, when he got in there, you're like, man, why weren't they playing Nick Chubb this entire season? Cleveland is the most attractive opening. Yes, Green Bay is open. Number one, because it's in Green Bay, it's going to be hard to get players there. The Packers haven't been in the playoffs in the last two years. What makes it attractive? That they have Aaron Rodgers? Joy said this. Top six paid quarterbacks in the NFL, none made the playoffs. It's not a coincidence, TJ. If you pay a quarterback $32 million bucks, you can't. Well, do we, do we erase Jimmy G since he got hurt Well, so we take him out. Okay. But, but now, and I think they'll but be better. still. My takeaway is if you pay a quarterback what you're paying Aaron, you can't keep your second best corner or your second or third best receiver or your right tackle. And all of a sudden, your quarterback's getting hit more. And he doesn't have that number two, you know, that kind of a Sterling Shepard, like kind of second yes. number two receiver, Marvin Jones kind of guy. Juju. It, it, it's, I think when you pay a quarterback what they're paying Aaron Rodgers, it's not the same. So you and I think Cleveland's pretty good. Now, what am I to do with Kirk Cousins? Just, oh, just man. talk. Kirk Cousins disappointed me, man. That's why um, Bruce Allen called him Kurt. <laughs> like, it's – before the two-minute warning in the game yesterday, he was four for six for 27 yards in the first half. You're in Minnesota in a dome, 27 yards in the first half? Really? And then him and Thielen are getting into it on the – they were arguing because Thielen took a high angle on the corner route. Kirk Cousins wasn't even to come flat. 
dude, this is the last game of the season. You guys have repped this route a thousand times in practice. Why is there miscommunication? The pressure got to Kirk Cousins. I'm, I'm dumbfounded. Like, you, Chicago didn't even have much to play for. All they did, the Minnesota's defense wasn't great yesterday. They were missing Kendricks, one of their better defensive players, but it wasn't close. They couldn't move the ball. Minnesota couldn't. He had 27. You give him $84 million guaranteed, and all you can give me is 27 yards so, technically in the first half? So on the sideline, when they're arguing with each other, what, what they're basically arguing is Thielen's trying to make it a home run ball, yes. and Kirk wants it to be a possession ball. Normally as a receiver, if you get man-to-man, -man and I'm even with the corner on a corner route, if we're even, I'm taking the high angle, sure. which Thielen did. If the corner is over the top of me, then I will come flat. But you rep these – so you do this in routes on air before practice. You do it in seven on seven. You do it – you do these routes – you practice these routes so often, I don't understand how it was a miscommunication. I want to talk I, – I, so I watched this yesterday, and the Patriots looked really good. And, I mean, their running game, Dorsett was open, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, are they – can, are they camouflage and stuff? What, what's going now? They're healthy. Am I making too much of beating a Jets team with nothing to play for? Or when you watched New England yesterday, was it in the back of your mind? Okay, they're eight note home. It's they, a little bit of both. You, it's funny because last week everybody was saying, oh I my was, God, like, the Patriots suck. Tom Brady is, he's done. They're going to lose their first playoff game. The Jets. I've been in a situation like the Jets. What happens? Once you get behind, it's like, you're, you're okay, my exit meeting is at 10 o'clock. I'm going to set my flight, and I'm leaving at 1230. I mean, I've been there. And, and so they, they, they gave up. But New England, like Gronkowski, like if you watch film on Gronkowski from just 2013. Not same and, player. Oh, my God. He moves different, night and day difference. New England, as long as they have Tom Brady, I'm not counting them out. Tom Brady, is he's just that good. He has the weakest skill players in the league, and he still gets it done. All right, let's go to some wild card games. we got about five minutes here. We're going to lay some wild card games out for you, and TJ and I are just going to talk about these games. We can start. Let's start. Um, it's a wild card weekend, so you get a Saturday, you get the Colts and the Texans, and then later at night, uh, Seahawks at the Cowboys, and then Sunday it's the Chargers at the Ravens, and then the Eagles at at the Colts. Let's start with Andrew Luck going to Houston. Who do you like? Oh, man, that's a tough one. They're they they split the games this year. Houston's offensive line is god-awful. They're it, terrible. It's the worst O-line easily in the playoffs. Easily. Yeah. That's my problem. And, and the Colts defensively are pretty good. I mean, honestly, I'll pick Houston. Why? I don't know. It's just a gut feeling. I, they have a better roster. offensive roster. Defensively, they got J.J. Watt, you have uh, Jadavion Clowney. You should be able to pressure Andrew Luck, even though Indy's offensive line is pretty good. They're, they're playing at home. I'll go with Houston. I, I don't like the pick, but I'll, I'll pick Houston. They are favored in Vegas. Seattle at Dallas, toughest game for me to call. Your thoughts? That that If, if Zeke can get about 125 to 35 yards and they're able to run the ball, Seattle's defense is good, but they – they give up a lot of yards. They do. Bob, Bobby Wagner is great, and then it's a bunch of young dudes. Bobby is a pro bowler in the middle of that thing. But, boy, after Bobby, it's mostly kids playing their butts off for Pete Carroll. Yes, and, and Chris Richard kind of knows knows the players. He knows that um, offense. Seattle wants to run the ball. If Dallas can slow that run game down and man their receivers up, I, I like Dallas. Uh, Chargers at Baltimore. Oh, man. I, I, I got to tell you something. Lamar Jackson's hard to defend, but if I see him twice in three weeks. That game was really close. He That was a great throw he made to Mark Andrews to kind of win the game technically. Melvin Ingram didn't play. I mean, Melvin Ingram. Melvin Gordon didn't play. Keenan Allen got hurt early. Antonio Gates fumbles when they're going in to tie the game. Oh, man. And I, Baltimore is like the team that I don't think anybody wants to play, but I just think it's tough to beat a, beat a really good team twice in such a short span. By the way, Chargers have not lost this year out of the state of California. They're 7-0. and Only road loss was at the Rams. Chargers are a better road team this year because of that weird home field situation. But playing in Baltimore, it's, tough. it's loud, extremely tough. I'm going with the Ravens. I'm going Chargers. Philadelphia, Chicago. Philadelphia, Chicago. Everybody wants, like, Chicago's a dark horse Super Bowl team. Everybody loves them. The way the Eagles are playing, man. 
I think the Eagles are going to win the game. So do I. I oh, really? No, no. <laughs> I, I, think it's, I... I think it's the upset of the weekend. First of all, Nick Foles, I can't explain it. The offense hums with him. But defense, the thing, Chicago wants to run the ball. Yes. And if you, the weakness of the Eagles is their secondary, but Chicago's not a throwing team. That's they want to run the ball. And Chicago's also got two receivers. Anthony Miller is hurt, and Allen Robinson got hurt yesterday. See, this is the thing. The weakest part of either team is Philly secondary, but I don't think Chicago – Can they exploit it? I don't think they do. And I'll say this. You can say what you want about Philadelphia. They got dudes everywhere. Philadelphia they has got, a strong roster. They got veteran guys who have been in playoff games. TJ, you know what playoffs are like. Some guys, deer in headlights. Mitch Trubisky. It's going to be – they're, they're going to run the ball a ton. Just minimize the mistakes. Minim, try to minimize his opportunities to make mistakes. Easy. They're going to try to – Balls to the back, out the backfield. Those are easy to find reads. If it's there, we throw it. If not, we throw it out of bounds. Easy reads. Philadelphia. Yeah, I like Philly. House money. How, house money. I bet, mean, I, bet. Philadelphia is a Super Bowl champ coming in with zero pressure. There is no pressure. There's a little bit of pressure on Chicago. It's their season. Aaron yes. Rodgers is back. He's going to have a new coach. I mean, to me, it feels like, hey, Chicago, you're at home. It's going to be tough sled now. Chicago's at home. It's going to be loud. It's going to be – and that defense Chicago has is going to, is great. But I, I got to roll with Philly on this. I'm, They're playing great at the right time of the year. It's great seeing you. Peter King is joining us in our last hour. Happy holidays to you and your fam. The same. Thank you, guys. He's got – Kids are starring all over America in intercollegiate sports. T.J. Hushmanzada, he was the Oregon State receiver I talked to and uh, that was responsible. The guy on the <laughs> other side of the field was crazy. You were the responsible one. we got to get out of here. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.